Tonight we're going to look at chapter 4 in the book Tramp for the Lord by Corey Ten Boom. The passage that we're going to look at first is Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. A Song in the Night The war was over even before I had left the concentration camp. I knew I would be busy helping those who had lost their way. I found myself starting just such a work in Blumendahl. It was more than a home for the homeless. It was a refuge for those who had lost their way spiritually as well as physically. Yet because I had lived so close to death, looking in the face day and after day, I often felt like a stranger among my own people, many of whom looked upon money, honor of men, and success as the important issues of life. Standing in front of a crematorium, knowing that any day could be your day, gives one a different perspective on life. The words of an old German motto kept flashing in my mind. What I spent, I had. What I saved, I lost. What I gave, I have. How well I understood the feeling of the artist who painted the picture of a corpse of a once wealthy man and entitled it Sick Transit Gloria Mundi. So passes the glory of this world. The material things of this world no longer excited me, nor would they ever again. It was during this time that I visited Harlem, the town where I had spent more than 50 years of my life. It was late in the evening as I walked through the streets, waiting before a traffic light. I had a strange feeling that people should fall in line, five by five, as in the concentration camp. Instead, they chatted about insignificant things, and when the light changed, they moved on without anyone shouting at them. Walking the streets that night, however, I felt growing in me a tremendous desire to tell all men, especially those in bondage to material things, of the one who can set us free from all prisons, Jesus. It was after midnight when I finally made my way to the Bartolajorastrat. There was few street lights, but the moon and many stars were visible above the ancient rooftops of the familiar houses on that short street. I paused in front of the beige on the corner of the small alley that came out in the midst of the street. I let my fingertips run across the door of the watchmaker's shop. Even though the beige was no longer my home, it was still a part of my heart. Little did I dream that one day it would be set aside as a museum to commemorate my family and the hiding place of those precious Jew Jews who had been saved from certain death at the hands of the Nazis. I stood alone in the darkness, allowing myself the sweet luxury of remembering how often I had put the shutters before the show window. Through this door I had walked on my first day of school, almost fifty years ago. Oh, what an unwilling pupil I had been, crying in fear of leaving the dear old house, whose warmth in the winter had protected me, whose windows had kept out the rain and mist, whose fear cheery fire had welcomed me and others in the family each night after the dinner dishes had been put away. Yet my father, knowing my fear, took me by the hand and led me through this door and out into the world of learning, into an unknown world of teachers and classrooms. Now, 
father was dead. Only my heavenly father remained. I ran my hand over the door, letting my fingers explore the cracks. It was no longer my hiding place. Others lived here now, and the world was my classroom. My only security came in knowing that underneath were the everlasting arms. How thankful I was for my heavenly Father's strong hand around mine. I looked into the small alley. It was almost pitch dark. I strained my ears and on the far off recesses of my heart could imagine the voices of Father and Betsy and the others. Had it only been a year ago? It seemed like centuries. What an honor, Father had said, to give my life for God's chosen people, the Jews. I felt the wall with my hands, then gently pressed my face against the cold stones. No, I was not dreaming. It was reality. The old beige, the old hiding place, was no longer mine. Ravensbrook had taught me much I needed to learn. My hiding place was now in Jesus alone. Even though I was wandering the streets at midnight in a town that used to be my home, but now was only a town, I knew the presence of my Heavenly Father. Suddenly the cathedral started to play its nostalgic chimes. Day and night through my lifetime I had heard the beautiful music coming from the Grote Kirk. It was not a dream, as I had often experienced in the concentration camp. It was real. I walked out of the shadows of the alley and made my way down the Bartle Jorastrat to the Grote Market. I paused to look at the cathedral, which was silhouetted against the dark sky framed into place by a million twinkling stars. Thank you, Jesus, that I am alive, I said. In my heart, I heard him reply, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28 and 30. I stayed there. For long minutes as the hands of the face of the great clock moved toward the hour. Then the chimes in the cathedral pealed forth once again, this time with the sounds of Luther's famous hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. I listened and heard myself singing the hymn not in Dutch, but in German. In Weisberger ist unser Gott. I can't, I can't speak German, <laughs> but she sang it in German. How like you, Lord, I half chuckled that you would remind me of your grace by letting me hear a German hymn. A policeman passed and looked at me and spoke a friendly word. I said, good night, policeman. A mighty fortress is our God. I was free. That is the end of chapter four. Lord, I thank you that we can trust you and that you have called us to not be afraid because you are our strength and our song. Lord, I pray that you will just help us, Lord, to be grateful and thankful for your goodness in our lives. And Lord, as she spoke about how that the Lord Jesus can set us free from prisons, the prison of sin is the greatest prison that any soul can be set free of. So tonight I pray for those who listen. God, if there's any who hear you calling their name, that you will help them to completely surrender 
And Lord, as she spoke about uh, materialism being a type of a prison, I pray that you'll help us, Lord, as your people, to be fully surrendered vessels meet for your use. And let nothing, God, in this world hold us back from obedience to you and to your word. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.